solidarity, what was it? It was the first non-communist organization. It was a trade union. It was the first non-communist organization to really exist and have power within the Soviet bloc. Who was the boss, the leader of uh, Solidarity? Well, that was Lech Walesa, often called Lech Walesa, uh, because we can't pronounce Polish very well. Um, he was an electrician, and he was called Lech. Solidarity went from 1980. That's when they really when when Lech Lech Valenza Lech Valenza climbed the famously scaled the fence of the ship the Lenin shipyards in Gdansk to lead a strike which would eventually become widespread um, protest against communist and Soviet rule. and it would achieve a measure of success. That was in 1980. Led by Lech Walesa and supported by Thatcher and Reagan and the Pope and all, of <laughs> and all those people like that. even though Thatcher absolutely hated the unions and would go on to smash them uh, in the UK um, and call them the enemy within. She seemed to like Polish trade unionism uh, because it was anti-Soviet. So she offered her support to Lech Walesa, as did Reagan, as did the Polish Pope um, in 1980. Banned in 1981, stayed underground, uh, as a resistance movement, a popular movement, eventually to take power in the elections of 1989. The Pope. What's a Pope got to do with this? He went to visit Lech Walesa and the uh, Solidarity Movement in 1980. Well, he was Polish and he was Catholic, obviously. You, is the Pope Catholic is a well-known rhetorical question. Yes, he was Catholic and he was Polish and the Polish are, like the Hungarians, very Catholic. And so having a Catholic Pope brought forward these religious and national feelings um, in a country where this was very important, Catholicism was very important, as was nationalism. And the communists tended to ban religion. So this, this the, the Pope became a religious and national figurehead. Um, and really gave, it was another catalyst, he gave impetus to the movement. Um, but like we say, in the end, in the end, solidarity, it, 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 it petered out after, after its great victories. It, it became corrupted, it, it, it failed. You, you say what you like, but it's, its main thing, apart from resisting and apart from putting forward health and women's um, issues and social programs and becoming a real social movement. What it achieved was to show the fact that the Soviet Union was now too weak in 1989 to deal with opposition as it had it as it had in 56 and 68 and 53 and, and all the other times that it pushed, crushed opposition. It could no longer do this because its economy had collapsed after years of stagnation under Brezhnev and uh, and Dropov and Chernenko and.
So it was basically up to Gorbachev to, at least this is the way we see this, there are different interpretations. It was up to Gorbachev to basically oversee the transition, the collapse basically of, a, of an already collapsed Soviet system. But it was the solidarity movement, not just of Gdansk. It was a, it was a nationwide movement, but Gdansk and the Lenin shipyards get the most of the the attention. It doesn't really matter it's that much detail, but they showed the Soviet Union to be weak, and in that sense, they were very important and acted as a catalyst for people argue. The, the, the imminent collapse of the Soviet bloc. This is Free Teacher. Okay, what are we going to do now? Going back. The only choice we got. Yeah, real simple. Kodak Beach. Just stubbed my toe. Solidarity. So, See, the crux, if we think about what happened in, if we think about what happened in Hungary, 1956, and if we think about what happened in Czechoslovakia in 1968, then we can notice that if you go against the, shit, it's dropped into the river. I'm going deep. All right, you will notice that if you go against communist rule, if you go against Soviet rule, the tanks arrive. Solidarity openly defied the communists, openly defied Soviet rule by being a non-communist trade union organization that carried on to exist even after it was banned. The Polish Prime Minister. Jaruzelski. He was the one who instigated martial law. He put the military in charge of the country and he banned solidarity. But they carried on. And in 1989, they would win a general election and become the first non-communist organization to take power in the Soviet bloc. So why didn't the tanks arrive? That's the important point. Solidarity, if it had have happened in 1956 or 1968, would have been crushed by tanks. Because the Soviet Union at that point was strong enough to send in tanks. By the time Solidarity won the general election of 1989, well, the Soviet Union wasn't in a position to send tanks in. And really, this is what solidarity showed. It shone a light on the fact that the Soviet Union was weak. Lech Walesa, Lech Walesa being elected the first non-communist leader of a country in the Soviet bloc. It's getting deep, son. There's bones under the water as well. Um, they didn't bring down the Soviet Union, but what they did do was shone a light on the fact that the Soviet Union at this point was pretty helpless and was beyond sending the tanks in. Solidarity, 
the success of solidarity, in a sense, was a symptom that the Soviet Union could no longer control events within its own buffer zone. So they were a catalyst, yes, for other organizations. Their importance was really in the fact that the Soviet response or lack of a Soviet response indicated the reality. And the reality was that the Soviet Union was too weak to march into Poland to deal with Lech Walesa and the Solidarity Movement. And with that, they were gone. The old man and woman who had a floating kitchen that they built on polystyrene. Unstable, you'll notice. Prone to collapse, you'll notice, if the water's rough. A little bit like the Soviet Union was in 1989. And it was Lech Walesa and the Solidarity Movement which showed that instability and the fact that, like that boat, it was just ready to collapse. But to be honest with you, those two old people were better at steering that little boat than Andropov and Chinenko were at, at steering the whole of the Soviet Union. It wasn't the workers in Gdansk that brought down the Soviet Union. It was a Soviet internal cancer, if you like, allied to the the Cold War arms race that absolutely bankrupted them really and their command economy couldn't cope with the realities of today's or any day's globalized capitalist system and they collapsed but no one knew nobody knew until solidarity a little bit like that teacher right we had a teacher they, they come in strong but it's all an act they got no authority whatsoever, but they look like they have. You know that teacher who stands there and goes, you stand behind your desk, you do this, you do that. And then the moment they're challenged by a little year seven girl, it all falls apart because they've got no authority. And that is what Lake Valencia and the Solidarity Movement proved. I've got to go now, I'm repeating myself. All right, goodbye. Bye. Solidarity, showing the Soviet Union for the clapped out skeleton corpse that it was.